Hello, I'm Dr. Marilyn Stoner. I'm the instructor for Nursing 658. You're about to view a lesson developed by CSUSB graduate students. If you have any questions about this video or the content, you can contact me at mstoner at csusb.edu and I'll be happy to answer your questions. We hope you enjoy it. The students have done a lot of work on this. Thank you. Welcome to How to Critique a Qualitative Report, prepared for the RN to BSN nursing students and Dr. Beeman's Nursing 343, prepared by MSN students in Nursing 658, Heather Bird, Ann Lama, Beth Rosencrantz, and Inez White. The objectives of this presentation is to be able to distinguish a qualitative study's purpose, design, and justification of research be able to describe the method and process of sampling conducted in a qualitative report, be able to describe the context of the qualitative study by analyzing data collection and establishing a procedural rigor was followed, be able to analyze qualitative data through rigor, auditability, and theoretical connections, be able to draw conclusions and identify implications of qualitative study and whether study would make for positive implementation in practice or research, and finally, be able to recognize and articulate the qualitative designs and methods used in research related to Watson's theory of caring. This presentation's focus is to teach you how to critically and thoroughly review a qualitative report, so please refer to the syllabus and this clinical review form, Qualitative Studies version 2.0, throughout the presentation. Also, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure you take the pretest located on the Qualitative Research blog. What do you want to know? Well, first of all, um, we need some help distinguishing between quantitative and qualitative research. Okay, so when we're thinking qualitative research, we want to think quantity versus quality. So qualitative research is aimed at understanding or getting a deep understanding of the person's lived experience. Qualitative research regards truth as subjective reality. It lets meaning emerge from the participants it's really a very holistic approach to testing and developing new theories. Now let me show you some differences in qualitative and quantitative research. So for qualitative research, the focus tends to be descriptions and attitudes, whereas quantitative research focuses on controlled or manipulated variables using experimental, experimental methods. The scope of qualitative research is usually very broad, whereas quantitative research is very narrow and limited in focus. Qualitative research goal is based on what the participants are seeing, hearing, experiencing, whereas quantitative research is testing a hypothesis to be able to obtain a measurable outcome. Sources of data for qualitative research include participants, informants, role takers, and respondents, where quantitative research is about objects, subjects, cases, data, banks, code numbers, and figures. Oh, okay, I see. Well, it seems like there could be some issues or problems, though, with that. It's, it, that's true. It's sometimes um, the research can be kind of time-consuming. It can produce massive data to sort through. Um, sometimes it's hard to quantify, and of course it can sometimes be difficult to control research or bias. Furthermore, it's difficult to code the data, and it's usually not applicable to widely dispersed social settings. Okay, Professor, well, since qualitative research can be somewhat convoluted, how can we determine the study's purpose and the background literature? Well, as part of your critique, you need to ask yourself if the purpose or research question was stated clearly. Um, it's usually going to be in, like, the abstract or introduction, or it can even be restated as a question. For background literature, you need to make sure that the literature is relevant to your topic that it's current and should cover gaps in current knowledge that will support the research. Okay, so again, when you're looking for the purpose, you want to ask, was the purpose of the study clearly stated? 
Is the problem significant to nursing practice? And were the qualitative methods appropriate to answer the research question? For literature review, you need to ask yourself, was relevant background literature reviewed and stated? Are the references current? And did literature review state plainly what is known and not known in regards to the current study? Okay, that makes more sense. Can we talk about study design? I'm confused by all the different types. Sure. Um, well, the four main types that um, we're talking about is phenomenology, ethnography, grounded theory, and participation action research. Okay, so phenomenology answers the question, what is it like to have a certain experience? The theory behind this is that there are some kind of essence to a shared experience. Ethnography questions, what is the culture of a group of people or people in a particular setting? Now let's remember, a culture is not limited to ethnic groups. It can be studied as organizations, programs, or groups of people with a common issue. Grounded theory is going to focus on theory construction. The research study would be focusing on identifying social processes within a particular social situation. And participatory action research seeks to understand the world by trying to change it collaboratively and reflectively. Oh wow, I didn't realize there were so many different types. So what would be considered a qualitative method or how would they answer the research question? Um, some of the methods that are used are sometimes participant observation, interviews, document review, focus groups, um, and other methods like mapping or audiovisual things like using um, cameras or photography um, and biographies or genograms as well. Okay, so what does sampling mean? So for sampling, we want to see if purposeful sampling was done. So were the participants selected because they have an experience that the researchers, researcher is trying to study? So we can look, look at how the participants were selected, um, what the selection process was, um, was there inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, how many people were in the study, how many people actually finished the study, um, and of course, if it's applicable to what you're studying. Okay. Got it. I got it. So the study should give me an idea of the key characteristics of the people involved? Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I have another question. Okay. So in data collection, can we talk about descriptive clarity and procedure rigor? My understanding is that descriptive clarity questions, if there are clear and complete descriptions, and procedural rigor describes the data gathering process, is that correct? You're very good, Ines. That's right. So that's exactly the idea. You want to make sure that there's clear and complete descriptions of the site and participants, um, that any kind of relationship is identified, and then you also need to be able to identify any of the assumptions and biases of the researcher and see if you can find if anything was missing from the big picture. We can also look at data analysis. With this you want to ask, was the data analysis inductive? So the researcher should describe how the findings emerge from the data. Um, and you need to make sure that they discuss how the rigor of the process was assured. Um, if there was any measures put in place to reduce researcher bias. And then what were the findings? Wait a minute. Can we review auditability? Sure. Um, auditability is going to be looking at the researcher's audit trail or how the researcher made decisions, um, developed the rules for transforming and interpreting the data into codes um, or themes throughout the research. Okay, so that brings us to the conclusion. So um, we will need to determine if the conclusion was appropriate based on the study's findings, right? So right before the conclusion, though, you want to make sure that um, the results offer new information or that the findings, um, see if the findings are linked to previous findings in the population. But with the conclusion, um, you will need to consider how those findings can be used in nursing practice and if those findings can add to our current body of knowledge. Good job, you guys. Um, and remember, since your hospital is Watson, Watson theory-based, the article you may choose to critique um, may be implementing Watson. So I put together a little bit, bit of information about Watson theory. It's going to be under the blog, under section 4, content. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. I think we have a better understanding of how to uh, critique a qualitative research. Absolutely. Absolutely, that's what I'm here for. And remember, if you do have any other questions or need more information, go to the blog. There's um, guidelines and literature and even examples of a critique. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. We'll do. And ladies, remember, what's our motto around here? 
Don't work harder, work smarter. <laughs> So again, if you have any other questions, please refer to the Nursing 343 Qualitative Research blog. You'll find all the content there with some examples, guidelines, and full PowerPoint presentations. It's going to be under tab 4 in content. Also after that, please make sure you go to tab 5 and complete the post test. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with your studies.